Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete episode 7 of our RimWorld Extreme Desert Challenge. In the last episode, we were finally able to cure Snake's gut worms, and we also produced a nice amount of kibble for him to eat, so today, for a change, we don't have any pressing issues that need to be taken care of immediately. Instead, we can grant Steak a nice long night of rest before we start re all of our rice and potato plants in the morning. With the crops taking a few days to mature, this is the task we want to take care of first, then we can let them grow while Steak focuses on something else. A short while later, we then have a small group of travelers pass by, but they don't have anything to trade, so they are of no interest to us. They might perhaps run into the wild man that is still on the map, but as you can see, he is currently sleeping and also still has some food left, so I doubt we're going to see another fight like last time. In the early afternoon, it is then time for Steak to have his first kibble-based meal, and we can see it here in his mood tab, he is not particularly happy with his meal plan. Eating kibble gives a rather hefty minus 12 mood penalty, but at least we no longer have to worry about eating raw food, so that penalty will disappear shortly, and Steak is also no longer sick and in pain, which also used to bring his mood down. All in all, I think we will be able to take this penalty for a while, at least as long as we keep him healthy, entertained and well rested. A few hours later, all the plants are in the ground and Steak finally sits back down at the research bench. At this point, we can also take a quick look at his stats and we can see he is starting to become a good shooter and also has gained some familiarity with farming, mining and construction work. It is Steak's shooting skill though that will likely be tested again soon, as we now have another raid coming in. Thankfully, it's just a single attacker with a knife and apart from being a good craftsman, he's not too interesting, so let's just keep researching for now. Eventually, we can send Steg off to bed, but as night sets across the desert, our attacker is making his move. It also appears as if our wild man has taken an interest in him, but he is way too slow to actually catch up with him. Steg, on the other hand, is well prepared and already waiting, bolt action rifle in hand. Let's see if he can land a few shots. Okay, after a few tries, he lands a hit, not enough to kill, but by hitting the foot, the radar is now significantly slowed down. This allows Steak to fire a few more times before he needs to retreat back behind his walls, and after the last hit here, things are not looking too great for our attacker. Still, instead of accepting his fate, he decides to lay fire to our base, nothing that we couldn't handle, but of course it interrupts Steak's beauty sleep. So while he is already awake, let's try to end the shenanigans. One more shot, one more hit, but still our attacker keeps going. So we might as well have Steak grab some breakfast now. Perhaps that gives him a more accurate aim and allows him to finally eliminate his target. Once again, the raider sets the wall on fire and also once again Steak quickly puts out the flames and repairs the damage before then going for the attack. Alright, and there we are, Raider down, he did not carry any items of value and stats wise he does not intrigue me, especially not as a slowpoke, so we'll leave him here in the sand, perhaps the wild man can take care of him, while Steak focuses back on research. And indeed, a few hours later we can see a very hungry Kuro slowly make his way over, and just in that moment our attacker also dies, so I guess cannibalism is making a return in this series as well, but at least Steak is keeping a clean slate. Our wild man is apparently also suffering from food poisoning, hardly surprising considering his diet, and that would also explain why he's moving and eating so slowly. And I guess we'll keep an eye on him, again Steak's handling skill is way too low to attempt to tame our guest, but perhaps he can get some use out of him, even if it's just by getting rid of corpses around the base. Now after a quick afternoon nap, Steak is back at the research bench, and that is also all that happens for the rest of the day. 
In the evening, our colonist goes back to bed, the night passes without incident, and we join him again on the next morning as a trade caravan arrives in the desert. They are war merchants, and for some strange reason their caravan is accompanied by polar bears, but let's not judge them, perhaps they still have something interesting for sale. Okay, if we had the money, we could seriously buy a polar bear or an arctic wolf here. They can actually withstand temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius, but of course we won't do that, and instead we can simply sell our ambrosia at the steel knife for a bit of silver and leave it at that. Stake then spends the next few hours admiring the artwork in his room, before he sets out on a brief hauling trip, because the poor wanderer who was killed by the wild man in the last episode left his bow, and even though it has suffered a bit in the sand, it is still of some value, so let's bring it back to the base. And yes, I know, we probably could have sold it to the war merchant right here now, but I simply forgot about it, and in the end it won't make that big of a difference, the next merchant will surely pass by eventually. Unlike in the last episode, we also won't steal our visitors' meals this time. We did that last time out of pure necessity, but with Steak having a nice reserve of kibble in storage, I don't think we need to stoop that low again anytime soon. A few hours later then, our visitors are also leaving again, and not only that, they have even left a gift for us. Five units of gold, that is not a great fortune, but it's definitely worth something, probably even more than we made in the trade earlier, so let's haul it into the safety of our storage room. Or, well, let's actually make a bit more space in said storage room, because all the kibble is already filling things up to capacity. At least Steak has improved his mining skill a bit since starting the series, so we have a nice spot carved out quickly. At night, we then pass into the next in-game month, but out here in the extreme desert that has very little effect. As you can see, it's permanent summer, all day, every day. No changes on the next morning then, after a kibble breakfast, Stake is back at the research bench, and believe it or not, despite playing on randy random merciless difficulty, not a single thing happens throughout the entire day. The most exciting event is a round of hoopstone in the evening, after which it's time for another snack, and then Stake already goes back to sleep. Even a beautiful aurora in the middle of the night comes at the worst possible time. Steak is fast asleep and is still dreaming as the aurora already ends again. So perhaps with the last remnants of this nightly spectacle still on the horizon, Steak goes back to research. And we are actually making good progress on that front. Complex furniture is getting closer and closer by the hour, and with that, a proper bed for our colonist is also finally in sight. Around midday, we also catch sight of everyone's favorite wild man again, apparently looking for food once more, and his situation seems dire. He is already fairly malnourished and will likely not last much longer. And I will admit I was contemplating whether or not we should offer him some kibble, but ultimately decided against it, simply because doing so once would not really change much, and I don't think we need the commitment of having another mouth to feed just yet, especially not if it belongs to someone who does not even actively contribute to the colony. Speaking of contributions to the colony, in the afternoon it is finally time, Steak has completed his very first research project, and we can now build ourselves some proper furniture. You can see the list here on the left, and it includes, most importantly, beds, but also chairs, dresses, shelves, chess tables, and much, much more. Our first priority is, of course, a proper bed for steak, alongside a dresser and an end table, as those two pieces of furniture will boost the comfort rating of the bed itself. Since building with wood is out of the question, and since stone is not ideal when building beds because it's less effective at providing rest, we are going with steel, and to build all three pieces we need 125 units. With his mining skills slowly increasing and darkness setting across the desert, Stake finishes his work for the day. We do not quite have all the materials we need, but one more night in the bedroll won't kill him. If you're wondering, by the way, what became of our wild man, he is no longer listed in the wildlife tab and I also could not find him or his body anywhere on the map, 
So let's hope he got away before starving to death, although I have my doubts about that. In the morning then, just after Steak finishes breakfast, we have a sandstone meteorite crash down. And to be honest, this was a pretty close call, just a few meters further north and the thing would have landed right on our base. Luckily though it didn't, and instead of sandstone, Steak has steel on his mind. But things continue to fall from above, this time we have chunks of spacecraft landing just north of the base. And well, that is an easy source of steel and components, and with our steel reserves exactly one unit shy of what we need, let's disassemble the remains. And there we go, not only do we now have a few components that we could potentially trade, we also have over 150 units of steel, enough to build what we need. First of all though, we have to make some room, so let's stow away the bedroll and get rid of the crafting spot, before we then place down a steel bed, a steel dresser and a steel end table. Again, dresser and end table are only used to increase the comfortness rating of the bed, so that Steak hopefully gets a nice mood bonus while he's resting. Okay, very nice. Steak has actually constructed a good quality bed, so combined with the bonuses from dresser and end table, this thing should be very comfortable. And yes, you can see it here, a comfort rating of 0.95. That is absolutely fantastic and will make Steak feel like he's sleeping on feathers. The remainder of the day is then spent with cleaning and art watching. And with the sun already sinking beneath the horizon, we have an eclipse strike the desert. At this time of day, the additional darkness is hardly noticeable. But if the eclipse persists, that could be annoying, as Steak will have to work in the dark and our plants won't grow. For now though, a well-fed steak can use his brand new bed for the first time, and we immediately see his comfort level rising. Eventually, he feels luxuriantly comfortable and receives a big plus 10 mood bonus, but it looks like Randy Random does not want our colonist to grow too fond of his situation, as he sends a psychic drone our way, inflicting a minus 12 mood penalty. Thankfully though, steak is already asleep, and there is hope that the drone doesn't last long. Eventually, the next morning rolls around and we are still in darkness, thanks to the eclipse, but that won't keep us from doing more plant work. Outside of our small base, we are now putting down a fairly sizable growing zone, and we will use this zone to grow cotton. Cotton will of course not be eaten by any wildlife roaming the desert, so we can safely plant it outside of our walls, and it will, very obviously I think, be used to eventually make clothing. Protection against the heat is very important in the extreme desert. A good quality duster, for example, is almost essential in the early game. And I don't want Steak to continuously rely on traders or the hides of dead animals to acquire clothing items. So he will now spend the morning hours to plant a good number of cotton plants, which will take quite a while to fully mature, but in the end it will provide us with a solid crafting material. We can also see Steak's plant skill slowly rising and eventually he improves it to level 5, good enough to now plant strawberries if we wanted to. For the time being, however, we are done with plant work. Steak has earned himself something to eat and we once again receive visitors, although they are just passing by so we can ignore them. Now at this point, I think it's time we start a new research project and we are going with stone cutting. I feel like one small mistake I made in the Ice Sheet series was delaying this project for a long time, so we ended up using precious steel for a lot of our construction work, which is something I would like to avoid this time. Stone cutting enables us to turn larger chunks of stone into smaller stone blocks, which we can then use to build walls, furniture, art and a lot of other useful things. Complex clothing is then likely going to be the next project, but with our cotton plants still barely more than seedlings, there is no pressing need to start it right now. In the late evening then, shortly after nightfall, the eclipse is coming to an end, so it only costs us about one day of daylight. I think we can live with that. The night itself then passes by without any interruptions, and in the morning, with Steak already researching, we have yet another sandstone meteorite come down, although this time it is a bit further away. And the events don't stop. In the afternoon, a large group of raccoons finds their way into our part of the desert, 
And well, with our base protected by walls on all sides, I think we can risk a brief hunting trip, especially since raccoons are very unlikely to actually fight back. So, rifle in hand, we are sending Stake out to greet the animals. Let's see if he can kill a few. Okay, it took a couple of tries, but one raccoon is down. That still leaves quite a few more, though, so let's keep going. Alright, now despite having all potential targets clustered closely together, Stake just can't land a hit, and the group is slowly but steadily moving away, and we are not planning to have Stake follow them for long, after all we still have plenty of food, this was simply an easy opportunity to take advantage of. With one last shot here, Stake then finally kills his second raccoon, but we'll leave it at that, all in all a pretty disappointing hunting trip. The end of the psychic drone then at least makes up for our limited success, and back in the base we can also harvest a single potato plant, which is good considering that we ideally turn the raccoon meat into kibble as well, and we need a bit more plant matter for that. A little later we also have a few rice plants ready for harvest, so let's take care of those as well before we send steak off to bed. On the next morning then, it is already time to butcher the two raccoons, with the animals providing 19 and 20 units of meat respectively. However, those 19 units of meat are actually a bigger problem than it might seem, because for each batch of kibble we need 20 units of plant matter and 20 units of meat. In other words, we are short one unit of meat and can therefore only make one batch of kibble here. We do, however, have enough rice and potatoes to make more, and large parts of our rice field will also be ready to be harvested tomorrow, so a bit more meat sure couldn't hurt. For the rest of this day, however, we will have steak do research, but then on the next morning it is time to launch another caravan. Since we're about to purchase meat, we also want to bring something else to eat, in this case 20 units of pemmican, and in terms of trade goods, we are going to sell all 200 of our psychoid leaves. I think initially I got them mixed up with smoke leaves, which we could in fact use right now to do some crafting, but to work with psychoid leaves we need to do some research first, and that is currently not very high on our to-do list, so I think we're better off simply selling them. After a few hours of uneventful traveling, Stake then reaches the Black Trosca tribe, so let's purchase some meat. Our 200 leaves are worth exactly 186 silver, and combined with the silver we brought, we can afford 61 units of cat meat. Again, we want to buy in increments of 20 here, plus that one extra unit we're missing, and 81 units are sadly above the budget, so 61 units it is, let's go back to the base. And here you can also see now why we brought the pemmican along. It was, of course, inevitable that Steak would get hungry on this journey, and that is what the pemmican is for, otherwise he would have consumed the precious meat. Now, back in the base, it is already getting late, but there is no sleep in sight just yet. Instead, we will have Steak prepare the next batch of kibble, and then do some harvesting work. As I said, plenty of rice plants have fully matured over the day, and we will now harvest them all to make even more kibble. While we're doing that, Steak is not only getting tired, but also hungry and missing recreation, but meat is sadly not patient, especially not the raccoon meat that is about to spoil in just a few hours. In the end, Steak's hard work pays off though. Accompanied by the first rays of sunshine, he is now making the last batch of kibble, and with everything safely stored away and his belly filled, he can then finally get some rest. And that, I think, is also a good point to make the cut in today's episode. It wasn't necessarily the most eventful one, but we made some good progress nonetheless, Steak now has a bed, and our food situation is also still looking solid. So, let's wrap things up right here. As always, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, then I would of course be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can either go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, or maybe pledge to the Peat Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.